In this section of Volume 4, we're we'll going to be talking about handling, processing, storing, and delivering specimens. Let's talk about the lab requisition. These must be filled out correctly. Review to ensure all information is correct with the patient. Make sure they verify that all the information on the rec is their information. Verify test and time date of collection. Also, you want to verify the patient information, doctor information, insurance information, and the test that has been ordered by the doctor correctly. Doctors and nurses can mess up tests and write the wrong test number. We need to verify that the test that they are requesting is exactly what they want. And please write clearly. Others are reading the lab requisitions too. Now, when we are handling the specimens, we will be putting them in a biohazard bag for shipping if you are working in an independent lab station. Now, remember, avoid unnecessary and shaking or agitation of the bag. Again, this can cause the blood cells to break, also known as hemolysis or the hemolyzation of the blood cells. We must also avoid spillage. Make sure everything is sealed and contained tightly in the bag. Stoppers are always facing up. Never should be facing down or sideways, again, to avoid leakage. Invert immediately. If you have to invert the tubes in the bag, invert them as they're placed in the bag. Make sure all lids are secured, again, to prevent leakage. And again, wear gloves. Always wear your PPE when handling any specimen in a lab. Now let's talk about specimens that require special handling, like temperature and light, which can affect analysis. Chilled specimens that are basically part of a metabolic processes of like ABGs, ammonia, glucogen, and parathyroid that these must be put on crushed ice. Now let's talk about light sensitive specimens. If these are exposed to light, they can be broken down by the light and decrease the values within the blood cells, like a bilirubin, a vitamin B12, a vitamin C test. These are ways to protect is using aluminum foil or an amber container that actually protects the blood cells from light. And again, these are special handling requirements when dealing with certain types of tests within a lab. Now, with time constraints for delivering specimens, we want to look at a couple things. Routine blood specimens. These ideally need to be in the lab within 45 minutes, placed in a centrifuge between 15 to 1 hour, depending on your lab requirements. The maximum time limit is 2 hours from collection. Now, stat orders go first. They're the first priority above any other routine draw. Stat means stat immediately. Also, specimens that cannot reach the lab on time they must be allowed to clot, be centrifuged, and extract serum or plasma to be prepared for shipping. Now, when processing specimens, we need to receive and prepare them. This means we need to check the ID on the tubes and on the labels of wherever we're collecting. We need to make sure everything is accurate before we receive and prepare. Make sure, if necessary, that everything is logged accordingly. Also, we need to sort by department. We have chemistry, hematology, we have micro. Make sure that if it's required to sort by department. Also, make sure you evaluate for testing that the specimen is in good condition and is evaluated that it's going to meet the lab requirements. Also, serum specimens and plasma specimens. These may require special time frames before testing or preparing for uh, shipping. Also, some tests may you need to clot before processing. Again, check your hospital or laboratory policy and procedures on processing and receiving specimens. Each one will be different. Now let's talk about why specimens get rejected from the lab. Number one, quantity not sufficient, also known as QNS. This can happen for two reasons. One, you did not obtain enough blood in the tube. Or two, there wasn't enough serum in the tube to be tested by the lab. Therefore, it will be rejected and labeled as QNS. Two, clotted additive. You did not invert the tube right away. This happens when you fail to invert the tube three to eight times after you take the tube out of the vacuum container holder. Instead, if you just set it down and you don't mix the blood to additive ratio in the tube three to eight times, you will have clotted additive and the lab will reject the specimen. Three visible hemolysis. This is again is the destruction of the red blood cells in the tube. 
This could happen if you shook the tube instead of inverting it. Also, this could also happen during transportation from the lab to the facility that's going to get tested. It might not be the phlebotomist error. So again, this is questionable on whether it's phlebotomist error or if it happened along the way to the lab. Fourth, not properly protected from light or chilled on ice. Again, certain specimens need to be protected from light or chilled on ice. And if you fail to do that right away, it could compromise the sample and be rejected by the lab. Also, using the incorrect tube. If the test requires a lavender top tube and you use a green top tube, this will be rejected from the lab. Again, using the incorrect tube that's required for the test will be rejected. Also, unlabeled specimens. If you send a specimen without it being labeled properly, it will be rejected from the lab. Again, you got to be careful. Make sure all the information is on the tube. If you have to manually write it, make sure it meets the requirements by the hospital and by the laboratory you're working at. Do not send a specimen that has not been labeled correctly. It will get rejected by the lab. This is the end of this presentation from Volume 4.